Inside this giant box is a $4,000 diagnostic tool that the dealer doesn't want you to know about. And this is a $60 scan tool that the dealer really doesn't want you to know about. So what's the difference? Today we're gonna to take an in-depth look at these tools and a few other specialty ones that can help you avoid a dealer trip altogether and save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars when working on your car. To test a few of these tools, we're gonna to use this clean title V10 Audi S6 that I just picked up at a junk auction for $1,950. This car was listed as a non-runner and when I picked it up at the auction, I could only get it to crank but it won't start. All the tools we'll look at today will have Amazon and other links down in the description. Up first is our least expensive tool of the bunch. It's called Top Scan and it clocks in right around $60. When most people ask me what sort of scan tool they should get for their car, nine times out of 10, I'm recommending this because of its capability at its price point. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about on this Audi. With Top Scan plugged in, I'm just gonna come up and we will turn the accessory power to this Audi on. With everything connected, we're just gonna go and hit diagnostics. And you can see, I already have the Audi program downloaded because I've used it on another Audi before. But if you go through the list here, it's amazing the compatibility of TopScan, again, for its price point. This is the first Bluetooth style scanner that I've used that will do a full system scan on pretty much every make and model in the world. Now here, we'll go back to recently used. We're gonna open up our Audi program. And here we're gonna do an automatic search of the VIN. So it used to be on the older style code readers that you'd have to type the VIN in. Now when you hit read, it finds the VIN automatically. And then we could just confirm it right here and we'll pull up what our car is. And there it is right there, Audi A6, S6, uh, later than 2005. And then here it is for the United States market. And let's just start things off with an automatic scan. This will scan all the different modules in the car. And hopefully this will give us some clues as to why this is currently a crank no start. Now again, since we've got a crank no start condition, I'm gonna primarily focus on our engine trouble codes here. We got a bunch of them. And we'll start with the first one, which is a P0030, which is the O2 sensor heater control circuit. It's bank one, sensor one, and there's no signal and no communication, which basically means we have a dead oxygen sensor. On this V10 Audi, there's a few oxygen sensors that are able to be gotten to pretty simply. And then the other ones require an entire drop of the engine and transmission because of their placement. Luckily, this specific sensor can be accessed just by getting underneath the car. You don't have to drop the engine, but I don't think a dead O2 sensor would lead to a crank no start. We've got some other codes to look into here, especially this one, P0300, multiple cylinder misfire, followed by a P0305, which is specifically a misfire on cylinder five, and then P0310, specifically a misfire on cylinder 10. Now we know that cylinders five and 10 are the rearmost cylinders on this engine, which is kind of scary. We'll get to that in a second. But in order to count cylinders, you always want to look at the one that is closest to the front of the engine. And if you look over here, then look on the driver's side of the engine, you could see that this one is the forward most cylinder. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. The rearmost cylinders pretty much in any engine bay are the ones that get the hottest because it takes the longest for coolant to flow to them. So the fact that it's telling us we have misfires on both of the rearmost cylinders tells me we might have something catastrophically wrong with this engine, but we won't know until we start taking it apart. So we know we got an O2 sensor problem. We've got misfires specifically on those back two cylinders, but that's not all that we found. There was also a fuel injector related code, which could also lead to a crank no start. The fuel injectors in this car are located underneath the intake manifold here. It's a decent sized job to get this up and off the car, but it's not impossible to do with the engine still installed. And last, top scan found that we have failed motor mounts. Yes, these Audis use electronically controlled motor mounts. They're expensive to replace, and sometimes the engine has to be pulled out in order to replace them. I'm not so sure on this car, but we're not gonna focus on that right now because that wouldn't lead this car not to start. So in just a few minutes, this little tool has exposed this Audi for the massive 
basket case that it is, but it's also giving me a strategy on how to proceed further to see if we're able to get it to run. Now you gotta think if you went to the dealer or an independent shop, they would want anywhere between the few hundred to $300 range just to do a diagnostic scan. This costs $60, so it's easy to say, pays for itself in one shot. And besides it being able to just generate and clear your trouble codes, it has a slew of other features like live data. Live data is super important to have on any scan tool because it can help pinpoint erratic issues as they're happening. I used live data on the top scan on our Audi RS7 when it was having an issue with our radar sensors. I was able to see exactly what the angle the sensor was sat at and I could adjust it, recalibrate Celebrate it again using this $60 tool and get it back with inspect to bring our radar systems back online. Live data was integral in diagnosing my fuel injector failure on my Range Rover. At first, I wasn't quite sure what part of the fuel system was failing, but we were able to see a drop in the pressures at the fuel rail consistently when the car was running. We correlated that to a certain cylinder and found a failed fuel injector. And one more really important feature set you need to have in a scan tool is your hot functions or your special functions. These are basically a set of programs that keep you from being married to the dealership. On a lot of these modern cars, there's an oil interval light that comes on. So when it's time for an oil change, it will warn you. But on a lot of the very new cars, in order to reset that light, the car needs to be plugged into a scan tool. It's insane. You used to be able to just push some buttons on your dashboard, reset that light, especially when it comes to Audi and Volkswagen. To get that light off your dashboard, it needs to be reset through a scan tool. Top Scan has the ability to do it, and also your electronic parking brake feature. This is probably one of the highest money saving features and something I use regularly, because anytime you do a brake job on modern cars that have an electronic parking brake, which is pretty much all of them, you need to unlock that electronic parking brake Otherwise, the caliper won't come off the car in order for you to install new pads. Brake jobs are super expensive now at the dealership. I got a quote recently on a Porsche Panamera. Just the front set of brakes was $2,500. The parts themselves cost under $200. And brakes are a great DIY friendly job as long as you're able to shut off and then turn back on your electronic parking brake system. Even though this is the least expensive scan tool that I own, I probably use it the most because it's just so versatile. There's hardly any drawbacks to it, especially at only $60. But if you're considering top scan, there are a few things you should know. Number one, you obviously gotta have an iOS or Android device in order to use it. Every time you download a software set for each make, like I have Audi and Ford on my Top Scan app, well, they each one takes up a certain amount of space. So if you're gonna download 10 different makes, you're just gonna wanna make sure you have the capacity for it. And number two, it does have a subscription fee of $50 a year. Now out of the box, it comes with one year, but after your first year, it's $50 annually. Now, to me, it's a nominal cost. Like I said, when you plug this device in, it generally pays for itself. But to some people, that might be a deal breaker, and that's where our next scan tool is gonna to jump in. This is the RD Diag 600S. I've had this tool the longest out of all the tools I'm gonna to show you today, and it has free lifetime software upgrades with no subscription required, period. Now, I've been using this scanner a long while, but that's mainly because I got it well before Top Scan was even released. It costs roughly around $200, and I've seen the price go up or down slightly as it goes on sale. This has a similar feature set to Top Scan, but it's a ability to do it without the need for a tablet or phone makes it a bit more convenient. Now I've demonstrated RD Diag in multiple videos, most notably it helped me find a failed wheel speed sensor in my Lemon Lincoln, which only ended up costing around $20 to fix. I also used it on the crash repaired Escalade that had a ton of electrical faults and it sniffed out every single broken module and sensor. And I've also used its electronic parking brake hot function a countless amount of times specifically for brake jobs. So the benefits of RD Diag over top scan are pretty obvious. This is a standalone device. You don't need anything else to hook it into. It has its own built-in storage. It also has its own built-in battery. And if that runs out, it's still powered over OBD2, your onboard diagnostics port. So when you plug it into your car, it'll power right up no matter what the charge level is at. We already mentioned it has no subscription fees. And like I said, I've been using it two years now and it's had regular updates during that period. So they're still supporting it and it's still a very popular 
popular tool. The most notable difference between these two devices that keeps me coming back to top scan though is that this is a full system scanner while this is just a multi-system scanner. When we used it on this Audi S6, you could see it came up with six different modules where top scan had almost a few dozen different modules to diagnose. Now the six modules that this scan tool did scan are arguably the most important ones in this Audi and they'll still lead me down the same path of diagnosis to trying to figure out why this car is a crank no start. So with the codes that we've generated already let's hop in this engine bay and see if we can't figure out why this car won't fire over. This is a very cramped engine bay, so I went for the path of least resistance. We went for the driver's side here. I was able to pull the air box off. And with that, you've got this big wiring harness that holds in the five ignition coils. Remember, cylinders five and 10 are the rear most cylinders on this engine. So I have the plug pulled out of cylinder 10 here and take a look at what we found. Just looking at the end of this spark plug and seeing that the gap has been completely closed. I'm betting that we're gonna find some carnage inside there. We'll go ahead and run the scope camera down there and I'm not holding my breath at this point. Oh, this is rough. Look at the chunk missing out of the piston. Like I suspected, when you see a misfire code on both of the rearmost cylinders, especially on a European car like this that really needs to stay maintained. Well, I would have honestly been more surprised to find things intact. So in about 30 minutes time, we're able to figure out that it's the end of the road, at least for us with this Audi. It's really just a $1,900 parts car. And this thing really would need a replacement engine. You would never want to try and rebuild this intricate of a V10 engine, especially with the damage that we saw in just one of potentially a couple cylinders that have broken. Now, with this out of the way, I want to shift our focus to an ever-growing automotive problem and a tool to solve this problem, and that's the problem of lost or damaged car keys. This might look like just another tablet base code reader. It has all the same hot functions that we covered earlier and can do your basic code scanning and clearing, but from there it's completely different. The T-Ninja Pro is a professional locksmith tool that can duplicate and create key fobs on dozens of different makes and models and it can do so pretty quickly. I'm going to show you right now how quick it is to create a spare key on this Range Rover. With our connector plugged in and top scan running, we've got two keys here. Our original key that came with the car and a spare that I got off of eBay right here for 20 bucks. We're going to hit the immobilizer function. We're going to scroll down to Land Rover, manual selection, Range Rover, and this is a 2014 model year. All of that is correct. Now we're going to want to select keyless system here. And we're going to want to add a smart key, but what's really cool is this function right here called all smart keys lost. If God forbid you lose all of the keys for your car, you can create a fob out of thin air with all smart keys lost that will start your car. However, we don't want to do that today because it will likely unpair the key that currently works with our Rover. So we'll just hit add smart key. It's telling us to hit the start button. So I'm going to go over here. Hit the start button. We're gonna hit okay. Now it's telling us to turn the ignition off. We'll turn the ignition off and hit okay. Now it's asking if the ignition was automatically turned on, which it was, so we can hit okay again. Now it's asking if we would like to learn new smart keys. Of course we would. It's telling us to put the smart key to be learned in our hand, which is this guy right here. You can see when I hit the buttons now, it's not doing anything. But when we hit OK, it should tell us to hit the unlock button. You hear the car beeping? And now it'll tell us to unlock, press the unlock button of the smart key to be learned again. I hit it again, the learning was successful. And to show you that this key works here, I'm gonna take our original fob. We're going to place it on the ground outside, get back in, put on the brake, new key fob right here, hit the start button, and check that out. In literally minutes, T-Ninja Pro made a replacement key for our Range Rover. 
Now the T-Ninja Pro comes in at around $500. It's a good chunk of change, but so is a replacement key for this car at the Land Rover dealership. Between the tablet and the spare key fob, I spent 520 bucks. I bet you that you can own this make your own key for hundreds of dollars less than what it would have cost at the Land Rover dealer. And if you lose all your keys, that's where this tool really shines. I've heard that dealerships want to replace your entire immobilizer module and give you a new set of keys, which will cost thousands of dollars. If T-Ninja is compatible with your car and you can check that using their compatibility chart, which I'll link down below. It is well worth the price. And if you're in the locksmith business or getting into the locksmith business with pretty much every single new make coming out, coming with a fob instead of a physical key, it's just one of those tools that you gotta have. And now for the king of all diagnostic tools, the Phoenix Max. It's big, it's powerful, and it has a retail price of $4,000. Up till now, I've mentioned that every single tool shown in this video will pay for itself after using it usually one time. In the case of Phoenix Max, it won't just pay for itself, it'll make you money as this is a professional tool meant to be used by a professional mechanic and you'll find it in a lot of different independent shops. Now obviously this is a bit excessive for the general DIYer, but if you're an advanced user, Phoenix Max will eliminate pretty much any reason for you to ever have to step foot at a dealer service center. And while it's packed with a million different features and tools, the main one I wanna focus on first is its ability to program VIN matched electronic modules on several different makes and models. This is really a huge deal because it used to be that the only way to code a VIN match module was to go to a big franchise dealer and pay up. Generally, a dealer would wanna sell you a brand new module, charge you for the install and labor time for programming. Used VIN match modules for cars new and older all over eBay, but a lot of them don't carry much value as there was no way around the dealer. This has completely changed in recent years with tools like Phoenix Max. When we go into the online function for this Range Rover and look at the modules it's able to program, it lists basically every single one available on this car. Now, if you want to see it in action programming a replacement engine computer, I'm going to link a video from my friend Super Mario Diagnostics in the description box. He's a professional mechanic that uses Phoenix Max at his shop for this very purpose. Since modern cars are heavily controlled by electronics, Phoenix Max packs nearly every feature of every automaker's tools all in one. You'll find features like transmission adaptations for when you repair or replace an automatic gearbox, different coding and system tests. I've seen it on some cars be able to actuate the smallest little functions like a single light bulb, which will help you pinpoint even the most finicky issues. Remember, each car has different functions, so to see what Phoenix Max's compatibility is with your car, check out the Top Don compatibility page down in the description box. And because it's got really powerful hardware, it can perform a full system scan in literally seconds with its high speed scan function. Phoenix Max comes with a four channel oscilloscope plus a bunch of different plugs for cars that are not OBD2 based. Plus it has live support through Team Viewer where others can remote in to your device, share the screen and help diagnose the car while you're working on it. It truly has so many features. It really just kind of needs its own dedicated video with probably a few sub videos at that. But if you are going to school or interested in becoming a mechanic, this is the sort of tool you're gonna wanna learn on since all of these modern cars are so electronically driven. Now, since I've been using these tools in my videos, I'm constantly getting asked, what tool was that and what tool do you recommend for me? That's what inspired me to make this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you learned something, be sure to hit that like button. And if you have any questions about the tools you saw in today's video or any diagnostic tools in general, be sure to drop a comment below or email me at samcrackauto at gmail.com. Guys, I can't thank each and every one of you enough for watching today. I'll catch you very soon. Thank you.